Hey guys, it's Danny. Today, exciting video. I have a few new pots to play around with and aren't they just gorgeous? I made a little arrangement here in preparation for what we're gonna do today. A few weeks ago, I got a message from Repotme asking me if I wanna try out their new ventilated glazed ceramic pots. And when I saw them, oh, I just fell in love. They are absolutely gorgeous. Of course, I wanted to try them out. I already had a setup in mind for them. And by the looks of things, yeah, we're gonna play with some Neo Phoenicias today. We did repot them about a month ago, not long ago. So they didn't get to establish just yet. And already we have a few pickles <laughs> with these pots. So I thought, you know what? These beautiful pots will be perfect for the Neo Phoenicias. And as a matter of fact, one of you guys actually asked me about these pots if I'm gonna make a review. So here we have it today we will work with these tiny ones the big one we're gonna leave it for the orchid care series which will be at the middle of June because I have other plants with this particular one I'm gonna tell you how you can actually use them with orchids not necessarily with the neophonicias and also I'm going to transform them into self-watering yes you heard me right we're gonna talk about transforming anything into self-watering today and how to do it so with that said let's get to work let's just take a closer look at these pots Alrighty, so I actually got to choose the pots that I wanted. So color-wise and design-wise, it was my choice. I opted for two of the four-inch pots and one of the six-inch pots. Now, these are handmade. And you can actually tell this is handmade. Whenever you do something by hand, it doesn't end up 100% perfect. So you can see the tiny little details or defects that give it away that it is a handmade product. So I actually really like this aspect. All of the pots actually come with a plastic liner. It's actually a transparent pot inside them. These tiny ones had two of them. This is how I received them. And the big one had one liner. So you can actually opt to use them with a plastic pot inside, which we shall do today but they can actually be used without a liner. And also they have attached trays. Now these trays, as you can see, they are connected, so you cannot remove them, but the water will just drip away on this tray and you can tilt the pot to remove the water. Same story with the bigger pot. You have the tray attached to the pot and on the bottom you have a few rubber legs so that you don't mess up your furniture. Oh, they're heavy. Now I've seen similar pots on YouTube with other growers. They seem to be pretty, pretty popular in the United States. We don't have them as much in Europe, which was a bummer. I always wanted to have one. So I'm really excited that I get to play with them. And just for the record, this is not a sponsored video, but Repotme did send me these uh, pots. I didn't purchase them. All right, so with that said, let's talk about how we can use these pots with our orchids. Okay, so the main way people use these pots is just as pots. We put medium inside, we put the orchid inside, and hey presto, we potted the orchid. There are pros and cons to this technique. Clay pots, which are not glazed, meaning they don't have this shiny coating and coloring on them, they tend to be very porous, very airy, quite suited for orchids in some environments and pretty unsuited in others. Because they are just so airy and they breathe for very warm, windy or dry environments, they can be a hassle to maintain because they need a lot of watering. Since the orchid is so ventilated, water is simply not kept inside the pot. And you might note that I did have a short period of time in which I tried to use them and they just got dirty really, really fast and I just did not have time to wash to 100 orchids really. Also they were drying out a little bit too fast for my environment so clay pots which were not glazed not my cup of tea in this environment. They look pretty it's just that I'm not comfortable with maintenance. However glazed pots will not suffer the same as unglazed. Being that this coating practically blocks the pores it will be the equivalent of a plastic pot. In my orchid collection, I'm using glazed pots, but as decorative containers because I maintain more humidity inside the actual orchid pot. And because I don't have drainage holes, I can leave here a little pool of water, which will be absorbed by the medium. Hence, I won't have such a hard time watering my orchids. What this type of pot is, is a sort of in between a non-glazed pot and a glazed pot, but with ventilation. As we can see, we have these design details which offer a lot of ventilation to the root system accompanied by the glaze which does not let the pot just breathe and lose water all the time. One of the cons of clay pots generally is the fact that roots tend to stick to it a lot. So no matter if we have glazed or unglazed pots, 
the roots will stick a lot more than they do in plastic. With the plastic, we can simply squeeze a little bit and the roots just detach super fast without any type of damage. With clay pots, it's not the same story, so we need to pay more attention to when we repot. We need to see new roots being formed just so we avoid a lot of setback. That's the story with all clay pots and it can be overcome. It's not a deal breaker for many, many people because there are many advantages to clay pots as well. One of the advantages, of course, is evaporative cooling in the unglazed pot. And because people want to minimize these cons that clay pots generally have but still want to benefit from the advantages, many people use actually a plastic pot or a liner inside a clay pot. We won't have the full benefits of clay pots, but we will not have a stuck orchid to the glazed pot. Being that this pot has actual ventilation holes, we will have ventilation for this pot as well. I will be opting for this plastic pot, not this one, although this can be used as well. It will just create a deeper effect. So say you have a dendrobium with pretty long canes. Something like this will keep it a lot, a lot more stable. And you will have this liner on the bottom that will prevent the roots from sticking to the decorative pot all too much. For what we need though, meaning a sort of kokedama with my neophnishas, we shall use this liner but I will be creating some ventilation holes just to work in tandem with the ventilation in these pots. So I will be using a soldering iron, which was cheap. I only use it for poking holes in my plastic pots. And by the way, if you ever want to attempt this technique, make sure that you're doing this outside or in a very well ventilated area. Plastic fumes are toxic. Moreover, if you're a very young orchid grower, please don't do this without parent supervision, okay? Just stay safe. And there we are, our liners are ready as well. Regarding the bigger pot, the six inch one, the liner seems to me a little flimsy. It can definitely work, but it's not like a proper pot. But fear not, I discovered that the six inch slotted pots work great. They fit perfectly here, so you can definitely do something similar to what I'm doing today with one of these pots and it will work as self-watering as well. So let's just get to work. So first let's start by unpotting the orchids. You might remember when I did the video with potting them up not long ago. Well, the pickle is they're not tall enough. No, really, this root has lost its tip because it was touching the shelf. So clearly I do need taller pots, so I'm hoping these ones will be just perfect. And I'm thinking even if the roots go down, they will just end up in the tray. So even if I move the orchid around, I'm not going to damage the root tip. So I think the change will be good for the Neophonicia. And being that I didn't pot them a long time ago, the roots didn't really have a chance to attach to this decorative ceramic glazed pot. They can really, really attach to these pots but it's happening in time. It doesn't happen overnight. And there we have it. It's really no damage to the root system. I'm not even going to remove the moss because it is brand new moss. Yes, there is a bit of algae, but I don't mind it. And this pot actually gets dry every time before I water it. So I don't mind a little bit of algae. I will keep the orchid and the root system as it is and I will pot it in the new pot. Let's put the layer of moss on the bottom. My medium will be just moss, nothing else. And as you can see here, I didn't actually have a hole, a drainage hole, now I will. So let's see, maybe I will need a little bit of moss since I wanna maintain the kokedama aspect. Yes, I do wanna add just a little bit more moss to raise the orchid up. And here we have it. I think this looks super, super cute. Now it's time to transform it into self-watering. If you look at this pot, you will see that I don't really have a reservoir, but what I do have is a little tray here, which can totally serve as a reservoir. Now the purpose for the raised pot is to not keep the orchid in a pool of water. And this is especially helpful if you're using media which are not absorbent, such as bark and even charcoal. We talked about media yesterday. If you missed the video, check it down below. So with those types of media, you want something raised indeed. You don't want the orchid to be in a pool of water because the water will just not be absorbed enough. However, with a very absorbent media such as sphagnum moss or even soils, self-watering can work and if you have a raised pot you will not get to that pool of water and it will just sit there. 
So to access it, we need a little wick. And even if I don't have a big reservoir, this will make such a difference. So a suitable wick for self-watering is one that is not organic, so it will not decompose and degrade and you will wake up in a month without it. I'm using microfiber. When you want to reuse it, you can simply wash it with some detergent or soap and it's good to go. And it's just not going to break down. And I don't actually need a big thread. I just need, hmm, let's say this much. And you might have noticed that I did not place my thread from the beginning. Well, this is because I wanted to demonstrate how you can transform an already established pot into self-watering. You don't actually need to unpot the orchid quite at all. All you need though is absorbent medium. If you have bark, it's not gonna work. It's not gonna absorb it. So now all I need to do is attach this thread to the bottom of my pot, wherever, it doesn't matter. So I have a bamboo skewer here, which I will direct my wick with, and I will just place it, let's say here inside my pot. There we go. And that is enough. That's all you want. Moss is so absorbent that no matter where the water comes from, top, bottom, side, it doesn't matter. It will spread it very even as long as you don't have interruptions or big, big air pockets. And as you can see, I don't. So the best thing about this is now that we are going to hide the wick. What I want to make sure that I do though is make the wick go through this drainage hole so that it ends up in the actual tray. So let's see. All right, it is in the tray. Now I'm just gonna lower the orchid in and hey presto, if you look through the pot, you can actually see the wick. So let's test it out. Let's see if we actually make the wick touch the dish. The way to do so is to pour some water in the dish and see if the wick gets wet. You won't probably see it very well on camera, but I won't be able to see it in real life. And we will be able to see the level of water decrease if indeed we did a good job. So let's just give it a little bit. And can you actually see through that ventilation hole the wick is getting wet, so that's what we want. Do you see that? We actually did a very good job. And here we have it. I'm gonna do the other pot really fast as well and come back with final thoughts. And here they are. I think they look gorgeous. There are a few more things that I want to address. First of all, when I started orchid growing, there were a lot of articles saying to never put orchids in glazed pots because the glaze can be toxic to the roots. So I've been kind of following that advice just blindly, but recently I just stopped because I have never in my life had issues with any glazed pot, nor did I actually see people who use glazed pots as they are without liners ever having issues. So from this point of view, it might have been something at some point, maybe the glazes became a lot more friendly to roots generally. So if you ever had issues with glazed pots, do let us know. I've never had issues. I've never seen people having issues. So maybe it's just one of those pieces of information that just needs an update. Maybe it's out of date. So I'm not going to threat about that. Also the water in the tray here in my environment, it's not enough to make full self-watering because it's just so hot. But in other environments, it might totally be enough. Not everybody lives in subtropical or tropical climates, right? So if you do need a boost of moisture, but not a whole lot, this can absolutely be used as self-watering and you can generally just put water in the tray and the sphagnum moss and everything will totally absorb it. That is if you're using absorbent media. Again, bark, other non-absorbent media will not work with this. And of course, there are many, many other ways in which you can use these pots. I chose the liners just for the ease of repotting when I will need to repot. And if you're wondering exactly what pots I ordered, well, this really beautiful turquoise one is the Teal Jade Fluted Hexagon Ceramic Orchid Pot. I'll link you to all of them down below. It is a four inch by six inch pot. And as you can see, it is pretty tall. I think it's really, really good for mini Phalaenopsis, Neophonicias. Initially, I wanted to put my little Sideria, but it's a little bit too tiny for it. So I thought the Neophonicias will just look better in it, but obviously, you can pot a sideria as well. This dual tone one is the Evergreen Emerald Over Cream Fluted Hexagon Ceramic Orchid Pot. That's a heck of a name, isn't it? Again, you'll have the links down below. I initially wanted this one for my variegated sideria. I thought it will make a lovely contrast, 
but hey, since I have a variegated Neophonisha, I think it works great as well. It's the same size as the other one, and it has this really nice flowery, I would say, design to it. And the big one is the 6-inch Honey Cream Over Copper Pinwheel Fluted Orchid Pot, which I believe is very suited for a standard Phalaenopsis orchid. It is a big pot. I was not expecting them to be so big and so heavy, which is good because if you intend to keep your orchid somewhere on a taller shelf, you can absolutely rely on something like this to stabilize it a little bit more. I chose this one because I absolutely love the copper shade, the hmm, aged, let's say, rusty tones to it. I absolutely love this. One of the things I was looking forward to with the unglazed ceramic pots were these marks of aging, but uh, you know how pictures are now reality? Yeah, my pots looked slimy. It's never going to happen with a glazed pot, so there's nothing coming out through the pores. You won't have algae, you won't have soil deposits, but it can look aged if you have one with such a design. That's what I wanted from this one. And I think that is about it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. We will talk about proper pots for Phalaenopsis orchids in about two weeks or so. We will talk more about the big guy over there. I just love these so much. You might know it has always been a struggle for me to find really cute pots for Neophonisias without actually spending hundreds of dollars on proper Neophonisia pots. I'll give them they're beautiful, they're artistic, I get the tradition and the custom and everything. It's something luxurious, I get it. I just don't feel comfortable spending that much money. This is a good alternative. So you'll have the links towards all of these down below in the description. And I hope you were inspired by this video to make some setups of your own with glazed or unglazed ceramic pots. And you know the drill, like or dislike this video below, subscribe to my channel for regular orchid videos, tutorials, Q&As and other fun orchid subjects. And if you'd like to support the channel, do consider visiting the merch store down below. And with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.